Hello everyone. So today we'll be looking at incremental lines in enamel, dentine, and cementum. Uh, that is in short the dental heart tissues. And uh, I will start off with a disclaimer first. Uh, all of the images that have been uh, that will be shown in this video, uh, specifically the scanning, scanning electron microscopic images as well as images of uh, the light microscopy uh, slides and the confocal microscopy slides have been taken from uh, the standard textbook on oral histology uh, by Birkowitz and Tenkate. So uh, the learning objective of uh, today's video is about uh, uh, the incremental lines, how they are formed and uh, their location and ad identification in the dental heart tissues, specifically the enamel, dentine and cementum. Uh, and secondly, we'll be looking at the clinical significance of these incremental lines and uh, Lastly, we'll be comparing and contrasting uh, these incremental lines in enamel, dentine, and cementum. Uh, another important aspect is that uh, it is frequently uh, asked in exams, and students find uh, it quite difficult to grasp the, the concepts of incremental lines. So uh, we'll be talking about uh, that as well. Okay, so. Uh, incremental lines so what are incremental lines incremental lines are actually uh, lines that are formed through uh, incremental deposition or rhythmic formation of any uh, material now uh, an example is uh, that of a tree if you just look at these concentric rings that you can see at the center uh, after the outer bark now these lines actually show us the age uh, of the tree just by calculating the number of uh, the rings that are present from the outer circle to the inner circle. So each and every line here actually shows us the year or annual uh, growth of this tree. And uh, similarly, uh, these are known as incremental lines in, in a tree. Similar to that, we have the onion rings. And if you can just look at, uh, there are actually lines here. These are also known as incremental lines. Uh, and they actually tell us that uh, how the onion was actually formed uh, can, uh, successively in steps or in increments or in uh, rhythm. So incremental lines actually show us the rhythmic pattern uh, of growth and we can actually calculate uh, the age through these incremental lines. So uh, we'll start off with incremental lines uh, in cementum, and these are known as incremental lines of Salter. Salter is the uh, person who actually identified, he, he was a histologist, and he identified these, uh, these lines that you can see alongside the cementocytes. I will just draw one line. And these lines, uh, some authors say that they actually show us that uh, there is annual deposition of cementum, but others they disagree uh, with that. But what it does show is that uh, cementum is laid down rhythmically and in increments. And these uh, increments uh, can be shown uh, as lines. And if the cementum that is deposited uh, in between these lines actually shows uh, the quantity of cementum during that given uh, time. So incremental lines of Salter are present not only uh, in acellular cementum but in cellular cementum as well. So another example of incremental lines of Salter uh, is uh, in this cementum, these lines that you can see here, all of these are uh, incremental lines of Salter. And similarly here, you can actually see these lines here, and uh, they show us that cementum was deposited uh, in a rhythmic uh, pattern. And this deposition of cementum uh, is shown by these incremental lines. Now we'll uh, move on to enamel. Uh, as far as uh, enamel is considered, there are two incremental lines in uh, enamel as well as in dentine and they are short period lines uh, which are known as cross striations these are 
uh, short period lines and uh, the reason why they are short period because they are deposited at an interval of three to six micron and they actually show us that enamel is being deposited on daily basis so it's uh, circadian rhythm uh, is actually demonstrated by these cross striations and we have uh, uh, from five to ten cross striations then form a weekly uh, incremental pattern uh, that is seen by the long period incremental lines and these incremental long period incremental lines uh, showing us the weekly deposition of enamel are known as enamel striae or stri of redzius redzius is the person who actually discovered these lines so the, this terminology is used alternatively either uh, in some books they say it's animal stri in others they use the word stri of redzius so uh, these are usually seen in longitudinal ground sections of teeth uh, and it can be viewed under light microscopy as well and these two images are both of light microscope while this is of uh, scanning electron microscope now uh, if a tooth is sectioned transversely then we are able to see these concentric uh, rings or lines similar to uh, the concentric rings seen in a tree and they actually show us the weekly pattern of enamel uh, deposition so uh, just to recap the names of the enamel incremental lines we have two incremental lines uh, we have the daily uh, cross striations which are short period lines and then we have the long period are uh, uh, about a week a long uh, the lines that are known as stri of redzius are enamel striae and the stri of redzius shows us that uh, there is a weekly enamel pattern of deposition so uh, another important aspect is this these uh, stri of redzius when they reach the surface of enamel they form these perichamata uh, ridges uh, these are uh, known as perichamata uh, i mean the british uh, authors as well as the British scientists, they call it perichamata roofs uh, and perichamata ridges. Uh, now, perichamata ridge is uh, the positive antepunctal landmark that is above the surface, and uh, the groove is below the surface. So, we have alternating lines of perichamata ridges and grooves, and these are actually surface manifestations of enamel striae or, or striae of red seas. Uh, whereas the American authors they call it imbrication lines of Pickerel uh, since Pickerel was an American scientist they call it imbrication lines of Pickerel while the British authors they call it uh, perichamata grooves are perichamata and perichamata ridges so these are also enamel striae or red seas uh, another important um, incremental line that is seen at birth is the neonatal line now this is a deciduous tooth in which this line is actually seen. It is showing uh, in enamel as well as in, in, in dentine. So uh, all of the primary teeth that are being formed uh, at the time of birth uh, will show this neonatal line as well as the first primary molars. All the four first primary molars will also uh, show this neonatal line. Uh, as far as dentine is considered dentine also has two types of of lines it has uh, a short period uh, of lines uh, and it has a long period of lines similar to enamel uh, the short period lines that are actually seen here are known as lines of von Abner and they actually tell us uh, the daily deposition of dentine they indicate about the daily deposition of dentine and then we have the long period these lines that I can see in uh, the ground section uh, viewed through polarized light microscopy and these long period lines are known as lines of Anderson so we have the short period lines of von Ebner and then we have the long period or weekly uh, weekly deposit that shows weekly deposition of dentine and these are known as lines of Anderson and both of these are in dentine so uh, now a little bit of 
the clinical significance of incremental lines and then we'll uh, summarize it the clinical significance of incremental lines uh, is it is in the forensic age determination and uh, we can actually de determine the age uh, through cementum as well as uh, through enamel by making a ground section of the tooth and uh, there are uh, another clinical relevance is that any metabolic disturbance such as high grade fever can actually attenuate or exaggerate these incremental lines such as the neonatal line and it can also show us uh, any childhood disease uh, uh, if it has occurred now uh, we try to summarize it so we have cross striations in enamel and these are very similar to the von Ebner's lines in dentine so it's equivalent in dentine is uh, von Ebner lines so it's cross striations in enamel and in dentine it's von Ebner's line similarly uh, the long period lines are stri of Letzius they shows weekly uh, pattern of enamel deposition and these are very similar to the uh, weekly uh, dentine deposition pattern which is depicted by the Anderson's lines and finally uh, we have uh, lines of Salter in, in cementum and these are actually uh, show I mean to, to some extent show us an annual deposition of cementum so this was the brief summary of uh, incremental lines thank you